In Singapore, human rights lawyers are concerned the country is preparing for what's being called an execution binge. At least 10 people on death row have recently had their bids of clemency declined. Ravi Madhusame is a lawyer who represents the family of one of the prisoners on death row. He says there are a number of reasons behind the increase in people facing execution. Singapore is gearing for this uh, execution binge because uh, recently there have um, bas basically set 10 people uh, whose petitions for clemency have been turned down and um, so they are preparing for this mass execution, so to speak. And of course, the argument is that on the, on the state side is that because there was an amendment to the law previously, so these people whose, whose cases have been considered over a period of time because of the amendment to the law, and that is the reason why there is a huge number of people uh, who are now facing executions. But I, I will disagree because the fact that um, last year there were already 11 um, or rather 13 people who were executed last year. So it is rather an increase in numbers over the years. So it is not just because of the change in amendment in law in 2013, there is this mass execution which is going to take place. And so in your mind, is this a ph philosophical change to actually executing people that have been sitting on death row in some cases for many, many years? Yes. You have yourself a very personal stake in this because you've been representing a client who's been on death row for some time. Tell us about the case. Um, as regards this particular client, um, he is not, uh, the, the client is actually the family whom I'm representing. Um, the person Nagindran who fa who's facing execution, who is mentally ill, and um, he is being represented by another lawyer, so I'm representing the family who have uh, who have requested me if there are any other avenues beyond Singapore, for example in Malaysia where any actions could be taken to uh, preserve his life. Has Malaysia taken any steps to try and intervene and to get him clemency? In fact last month, um, before even I answer that question, um, I would say that um, honestly, the clemency process is completely hopeless because since 1998, there has not been a single clemency that has been granted. So therefore, the clemency process has been rendered futile. In fact, it is called a presidential pardon process, but in fact, it is the cabinet that exercises that decision. So therefore, this hope that the Malaysian government will intervene to help in the clemency process is something which we are not hopeful. But what I am hopeful is that recently, um, about two weeks ago, I was uh, in Malaysia and we are working with the Lawyers for Liberty in Malaysia and I presented a, a draft complaint to the Malaysian government to file a complaint at the International Court of Justice uh, highlighting the several breaches in international law, including the fact that a mentally ill person should not be executed. There is a bar on, uh, on, uh, in international law not to execute a person who is mentally ill. So I'm quite hopeful that the Malaysian government will take this um, complaint seriously because this Nagendran's case is quite unique. Now let's talk about why it is unique. He was arrested for a, a possession of heroin um, and you believe that he has a very low IQ. So what is the bar for mental impairment and how do you argue that case? Okay, in terms of mental impairment and whether the Singapore law allows for any avenues for setting aside the death penalty, the answer is yes. Because um, in the, in the, in, uh, under Singapore law, if, if one is sentenced to death for drug trafficking and if he suffers from mental uh, impairment as a result of the abnormality of mind, so one qualifies to be resentenced to life imprisonment. However, the bar for mental impairment is very high. Although Nagendran's own psychiatrist say that he suffers from mental impairment, that would uh, qualify for a resentencing. But the state psychiatrists say that his mental impairment is just a low IQ of 69 and it does not uh, impair his mental responsibility. So under Singapore law, the threshold is very high.
to qualify for mental impairment. But under international law, Nagendran who suffers from an IQ of 69 will qualify for a basically a, a process that will be available to him to mitigate the death penalty. Many Australians will remember, Ravi, very well the, the execution of the Australian uh, Van Uang Nguyen back in 2005. How much has changed since that time? Have there, you talk about changes, amendments to the, to the laws, but have things significantly changed since then? Um, the, the situation in Singapore is one of mandatory death sentence. In fact, um, previously, uh, when Van Nguyen was executed in 2005, there was mandatory death sentence in Singapore. In 2012, that was amended to allow that, that um, the mandatory death penalty regime was amended to allow judges some form of discretion. But that discretion essentially for drug trafficking cases is not really uh, the, the, the judges who exercise their discretion. That discretion is in fact is in the attorney general or the, rather the public prosecutor who gives a certificate, a certificate which is called certificate of cooperation, to one who qualifies that certificate will be then entitled to be resentenced in court. At which point of time the judges could then exercise their discretion. So we will say that there is an improvement. It is just a partial mandatory death penalty. Uh, in Singapore. Mm. Uh, when you talk about mandatory death sentences uh, for drug trafficking, has that proven a deterrent? Obviously it is not because the, the, the fact that Singapore has to execute 13 people in 2018 and now we have this so-called execution binge this year where 11 to 13 people are, are awaiting execution and we see the report from the state recently and the ministry of uh, uh, the, the government's uh, statements there seems that death, that uh, death penalty is no longer a deterrent for drug trafficking or drug abuse so in in a way and singapore and, and singapore government has not done any studies until today to show that um, death penalty deters drug trafficking D does singapore attract any international attention because of this policy Yes, in fact, uh, there is a global movement towards abolition and Singapore has taken a very, very uh, strong stand at United Nations General Assembly in opposing any form of resolutions for a moratorium on death penalty. So Singapore, although it's a small nation, but leads, but is a leader of a, of, for the League of Nations like China and Iran and Saudi Arabia. Uh, to to call f to oppose any form of uh, moratorium on death sentence. So therefore, Singapore is rather unpopular at the international arena. Ravi, appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much. Thank you.